my name is Ken Clark and I'm Senior Lecturer in Economics at the University of Manchester, where I've also been a member of the Centre on the Dynamics of Ethnicity since its inception about eight years ago. Uh, I'm leading two of the work packages uh, for this project. Work package three, young people transitioning into the labour market and education. And the other work package is work package five, which is about uh, employment. I'm leading work package three, which is on young people transitioning into education and employment. And what it's essentially about is the, the transition between compulsory education and what comes next. And that's a fundamental step in, in most people's life journey. And what the work package seeks to do is to show how labour market inequalities are rooted in the differential experiences of young people in the education system. And we'll try to investigate how the pathways to employment are patterned by ethnically marked choice and constraints in post-compulsory education provision. So the context here is the, is the very difficult economic situation into which school leavers and young people will be graduating uh, both last summer and this summer. We know that economic recessions can have uh, differential effects on different groups and, and in particular recessions can exacerbate the differences between white groups and BME groups uh, in society. <laughs> We're going to examine apprenticeships. Um, apprenticeships are a key element of employment policy that's intended to improve intermediate skills. And the, the, the thing we're going to be interested in is how effectively this operates for, for people from different backgrounds. So the usefulness of apprenticeship policy in addressing ethnic, ethnic inequalities is, is open to some question. We know that BME learners are overrepresented in applications for apprenticeships, but they're underrepresented in terms of those who start and, and actually those who complete uh, apprenticeship. So we want to get, get to the heart of, of some of those kinds of issues and, and just understand why that might not be working as well as it is for people from BME backgrounds. But the other thing we want to do, which, which is related, is we want to address the question of whether young people from BME backgrounds are getting the full value from their investments in human capital. So the, the time that they invest in education, do they get uh, a return on that? Does the labour market recognise their qualifications and their achievements in the same way that it does for the white majority group? Or is this how labour market discrimination manifests itself in the UK? So we know there's been big increases in the educational attainment of many BME groups in recent decades. The question is when will we see this bear fruit in terms of access to the best jobs? The research that this work package is doing um, is, is, is ultimately going to be policy focused and it's going to highlight the need for UK policymakers to consider the wider implications for ethnic minority groups when they're formulating policy around education and the labour market in the response to the COVID-19 crisis. We're trying to provide a yardstick uh, against which post-pandemic policy can be measured as well as suggesting directions in which policy can uh, be developed. We want to get these findings right to the very heart of government and to make sure that the, um, the ethnicity part of this story is, is not being neglected. This work package is looking at the access that BME groups have to the labour market and to good jobs, and it's going to be analysing their particular vulnerability to the business cycle. The International Labour Organization talks about good work um, and alongside other considerations about remuneration or job security or social protection or possibilities for development, one of the things that's really uh, emphasized in there is, is just equality of treatment. So we want to see how there's equality or inequality of treatment uh, for BME groups in, in the British labour market. So we'll be looking at differences in the likelihood of pr holding precarious or non-standard jobs, uh, between different ethnic groups, across gender, uh, across region. And we're going to construct a, a measure, an empirical counterpart to the theoretical idea of a good or a decent job and try and estimate some statistical models which try and lay bare the ethnic pat patterning of labour market advantage and, and disadvantage. <laughs> We 
want to get our message into the heart of government and into um, policymakers' entries and, and get them to be uh, aware of the differential and unfair patterns of treatment that there are for different groups. Um, there's been a lot of work on this down through the years. There's been initiative after initiative, but we still find ourselves in a situation where there is discrimination against people in the labour market. And um, we, we want to just um, keep keep going with that message and just keep getting that message in there that we can't um, let up uh, with any policy measures that uh, are, are aimed at, at, at addressing this, particularly in a context where we're going to see uh, a very difficult economic situation, a very difficult labour market. And one of the things that we do know is that when the economy is in trouble, when, when uh, unemployment's rising, when we're in an economic downturn, it's very, very often the BME groups who, who suffer the worst. And we want to make sure that there are appropriate protections in place uh, to, to, to stop that having a big uh, negative effect on their welfare. 